we'll just move right along. Uh, <clears throat> our next speaker is uh, Bazi Heino from Finnish uh, Minerals Group, who will be telling us about the Sokli, uh, multi-metal deposit and critical raw materials for energy trans, uh, transition. Hi, nice to see you again, Bazi. Hi, nice, nice to be here. Okay, great. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, I'm working as a project manager in, in Sokli. Uh, mining project. Uh, uh, I have been working this project about uh, a little bit over a year ago now. Uh, and the previous background is about uh, 15 years years in mining related uh, business. Uh, geolo and uh, my background is uh, geologists for, for your information. <clears throat> so let's go through the main topics from Sokli currently, what we are doing there. Uh, and the main main topics in this presentation is uh, a little bit about the Sokli's history, because it's a very long, exceptionally long maybe, for the mining project. Uh, and a couple of words about the potential future regarding the raw material resources. Uh, and our approach for this project, and a uh, couple of words of also about the sustainability during uh, seven decades in this Soviet project. It's an uh, interesting uh, path also to know. Uh, but before we go deeply in, in this Soviet, so I would I'd shortly tell uh, about the ownership of this Soviet project, uh, so that uh, Sokli uh, company is uh, fully owned uh, subsidiary regard, uh, from, for, for Finnish Minerals Group, uh, which is a uh, government uh, special purpose uh, holding and development company regarding mining uh, and battery value chain uh, projects. Uh, and our vision responsibility maximizing the value of Finnish minerals uh, and provide the materials for climate neutrality that, that is if, if saying that shortly uh, and a uh, little bit about the uh, other uh, companies than Sokli as I said Sokli is 100 percent owned uh, by Finnish minerals group uh, and and so so meaning that uh, this government ownership and then we have this uh, TerraFame, uh, uh, nickel, uh, zinc, uh, uh, cobalt mine in, in uh, Sotkamo, uh, and Caliber uh, mining project. Uh, there is a small small portion, a little bit less than 20% ownership, uh, and Caliber is uh, targeting to uh, start lithium uh, hydroxide production in, in uh, Western Finland in near future. And uh, let's go back to the Sokli. Uh, it's the 55th anniversary uh, coming in June. June 18th, we will have a, a open, uh, open door doors uh, in Sokli side. Uh, uh, because of uh, 18th of June 22nd, uh, it will be 55 years when, when Sokli was discovered. And uh, here, here you can see, uh, well, uh, not, not a comprehensive timeline, but uh, maybe some important uh, points has been raised, raised in this picture. So that uh, one important thing to note is, uh, is that uh, Sokli uh, mining rights has always always owned by state, uh, Finnish state on main time, but uh, Yara uh, as a big global fertilizer company owned owned Sokli rights uh, from 2007 to 2020, and it's also owned uh, big portion is owned by Norwegian state, and now back back in Finnish state. Owned. 
Uh, and one thing, uh, if we are looking about the uh, commodities from Sokli, what has been uh, uh, studied most in uh, by those companies there, is that uh, we can notice that the phosphate has been the main focus uh, whole time, and then there has been some niobium studies in the past. Uh, and uh, during these studies, uh, previous companies has found uh, some other potential commodities as well, but uh, those hasn't been uh, main target for to, for them at the mo at, at that time. And also, the, of course, the uh, global situation and the uh, need for certain commodities has been changed quite a lot, lot during the decades. Uh, <clears throat> And what we are doing, we have studied now a feasibility study, uh, or it's a mainly a pre preliminary economical assessment, which is uh, uh, now ongoing, and we are targeted to have it ready end of this year to see what what is the what what is the uh, most uh, beneficial road forward with Sokli. What are the most important commodities where we should uh, gain our our studies in the future? That will be more clear end of this year. <clears throat> uh, and a couple of words about uh, Sokli's potential in critical raw material point of view. Uh, I have uh, drawn a couple of circles uh, around to these. Uh, commodities mentioned in this uh, newest criticality assessment uh, uh, table uh, or figure. As you can see, quite many circles can be found from this, this picture. All of those circles are representing the potential what we have uh, discovered from, from Sokli. It's uh, quite, uh, quite uh, uh, impressive, uh, I can say. Uh, and especially these rear urges are uh, one of our main uh, main uh, main main thing what we are looking uh, together with this phosphate and, and iron uh, so so we we are keen to look these rear urges because these are as we all know very important for this uh, green transition and uh, forecasted demand and price price uh, forecasts is is quite uh, uh, well high high for these it, it, I, I just took a uh, newest uh, price data for neodymium and praseodymium uh, today from Kitco and uh, it has been peaked peaked already about early early this year but uh, it's still forecasted to be the prices should be quite high also in the future future for this because of high demand. Uh, and a few words of, of course about the geology of Sokli. Uh, as it is uh, already mentioned, the potential for different different commodities is high, uh, but uh, but uh, also it's uh, important to understand uh, the size of of Sokli uh, carbonatite complex itself, because it creates uh, understanding about the potential in, in, in the big picture. If we look at uh, this carbonatite uh, central, uh, uh, car carbonatite complex it, itself uh, and, and central carbonatite uh, core area, it's about a 20 square kilometer size area. I, uh, where is this, this one? So. Uh, and also one uh, potential uh, area is this uh, uh, phenite rim outside of this carbonatite uh, uh, core. Together the whole area is 50 square kilometer wide area and the depth is, is uh, open. Uh, there, there has been some 
deep seismic studies uh, somewhere in 70s where, where they discovered that it's 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 continuing uh, downwards and at least six kilometer was was discovered on on that time from those 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 uh, geo, geo seismic studies and the most mostly uh, uh, studies has been uh, concentrate on certain areas uh, and I mean uh, lateritic phosphate ores uh, in here in the western uh, Sokli area and eastern Sokli area uh, these areas there here so <clears throat> uh, that is material which you can uh, dig uh, with uh, ex ex excavator so it's it, it doesn't need any blasting it's uh, soft lateritic uh, uh, ore type. Um, it's uh, only about uh, 40, 50 meter as an average deep the depth of, of these, these, these uh, lateritic ore, ores in here. Uh, and some studies has been um, done also in, uh, in this so-called hard rock. So there are little bit over 100 kilometer drillings totally and about a little bit over 50 kilometers has been drilled in this so-called hard rock resources in, in Sokli and, and uh, that is our current knowledge uh, regarding, regarding Sokli uh, resources in, in hard rock uh, and also the assays of course has been done in history but uh, there are uh, missing some some elements which are important in nowadays and and uh, of course analytical methods has been developed also during during the decades uh, so we are re analyzing and, and re reporting the course and, and so on to, to get a full understanding about this piece uh, Okay, and to get an understanding what means lateritic ore, you, you can see it, it's, it's like this. It's a brownish, brownish color, uh, white, white uh, looking like a soil mainly. It's, uh, it's like this and uh, then, then we have of course this so-called hard rock carbonatite drill course there and, and it it's, uh, looks more, more normal for, for for our eyes, eyes and easier to lock also. And then uh, when coming to this new new approach um, <coughs> of Sokli and our, our approach, uh, we have a couple of objectives for this project so that we are, as I said, exploring now the whole Sokli mineral reserve or resource uh, fully what, what, what we have have there uh, and uh, definitely we are looking also other commodities than phosphate and iron as well. Uh, we are uh, also included this uh, responsible mining principles uh, for this our study what we are now uh, carrying on um, and looking uh, widely options, so-called out, out of the box also, how, how to beneficiate and extract so Sokli ore so that it will honor also environmental aspects on that area because it's, it's a, a de dedicated area with, with many environmental, uh, uh, important environmental issues which we need to take care, take care uh, as well. And also I mentioned this self-sufficiency, it's uh, also politically a hot potato currently where we can get uh, European raw materials and, and also where we can start a production when we need so. So it's uh, so at least one, one of the definitely one of the most, most important resources of what we have in Europe if we look at this uh, wide variety of commodities. 
And again, uh, here the commodities uh, listed listed uh, shortly because we are seeing in this critical raw material uh, slide already. But uh, here are some some other other commodities also which didn't, wasn't uh, visible there. So at least for me, it was a, a surprise uh, how wide. Uh, potential there are there is in Sokli because many times you hear that it's a phosphate deposit or okay you can get an iron also from there that is how Sokli has been understood uh, in the in the history mainly uh, and for me when I started in this project it was also the same that I know I, I, I know knew that phosphate and iron there are and then there are some some uh, vermiculite and niobium studies, which has been done done in the past, and uh, maybe some rare earths also. Okay, and uranium is is uh, uh, together with with uh, niobium in pyrochlor, and and but uh, there are in these other elements in in this last box, there are some which was totally new at least for me that uh, there is a potential for those also. So so, so that there are some ore types which are containing copper also as well as silver and and tungsten that then that's that was totally new for me at least I don't not know if if you knew that that but at least now you now you know that there is some certain potential for those also uh, and uh, this is also something what I mentioned earlier that this preliminary economical assessment work is ongoing. We started started this work on November last year, and uh, our idea is that the end of this year we, we will finalize this. And uh, idea is like this first bullet point is saying that uh, it will increase our understanding of uncertainties and risk factors also regarding this project, even though preliminary economical understanding increase, of course, as well. And we definitely want to uh, have a comprehensive assessment of this full potential of Sokli regarding these, these uh, different commodities and when, when we are using also the latest technology and, and see how it affects effects for this beneficiation uh, possibility of, of Sokli. And also the rate of studies, of course, there are the several uh, ongoing, which will feed uh, this PEA work itself. Uh, and uh, one example is uh, the uh, geological uh, discipline, where we are uh, putting quite a lot of effort to get an understanding about them. Uh, more comprehensively, this, this geological uh, point from point to point, and uh, let's look shortly. This this is short short video gathered uh, from from uh, geo geological work what we have uh, studied, and uh, mainly from digitalization uh, point of view. So that we started from these kind of two two D maps. Uh, we have digitalized uh, so much data than what, what, what has been uh, possibly possible uh, in such time what we have had at, at the moment. And geological, geophysical data from past history, digitalized uh, drill, core, drill core observation assays, a lot of exploration trenches. There are 21 kilometer exploration trenches uh, in, in the history, uh, and now those has been transferred in digital format. Geophysical uh, uh, interpretations nowadays, now, uh, nowadays software has been used, and this kind of uh, uh, 3D deposit model is now created. This is first time when uh, this kind of deposit model from Sokli in 3D has been formed ever. So 55 years it took, but now, now it is done finally. And this will definitely help us, especially uh, when we are now running also this uh, PEA and we need this uh, mining uh, mining optimization also uh, and, and, and 
data data from from that is is viable viable for for the PEA pro work itself. Uh, then a little bit uh, about the sustainability uh, and adaptive reuse. Uh, this is the new word which uh, was learned uh, maybe a month ago. So that uh, it, it means that uh, we have taken old facilities from Sokli because in Sokli uh, there was already on the late 70s, early 80s, it was built a pilot concentrator and crusher and, and facilities in Sokli. Uh, they had a couple of years test run with the Sokli lateritic ore there on, on the history. And those old buildings were still uh, still there uh, and uh, on poor condition, uh, maybe only in inside, but outside was was so that uh, they were still on, on very good condition and we just changed the purpose of those uh, uh, those buildings and we got very good uh, 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 sample storages from, from these old buildings. We, we demolished uh, some outer parts and, and and now we have very nice nice place where to work and uh, this kind of pilot concentrator was there in the late 70s and this was how, like how it looked last autumn quite awful place but <laughs> currently it looks like this everything is in order and all, all the all historical samples has been collected on the same place and this was one uh, room for from uh, how it looked and uh, when they all was demolished inside we started to create a new facilities there and now we have nice drill for logging facilities in so never been so fancy facilities uh, in early uh, in earlier history <laughs> of so we so we are proud of these new, new facilities what we have there And now we will have a lot of lot of this kind of work <laughs> on uh, in the future. There we will have a couple of summer trainees, geo geologists studying uh, quite soon, mid of May, May, and and uh, they will start to re report old old course. And then uh, maybe a couple of words about the sustainability during seven decades. Uh, this is uh, in interesting how the things are coming coming again um, uh, so the same similar so I'm just saying that um, similar issues has been uh, on 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 topics also in in the past history history if we are looking example like this that uh, 88 year 88 it was said that uh, only uh, feasibility is is uh, the feasibility is the most important thing in Sokli, so that 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 will solve Sokli's case. But uh, of course nowadays we need to look also other aspects than only a, a plus and minus under the line. We need to understand the, the uh, uh, responsibility and, and social acceptance and, and so on. So, so those are also highly important nowadays. Then uh, currently a topic, a topical issue is this um, uh, Russian uh, effect for the Sokli. So in the history, Russians has participated strongly uh, in Sokli's studies, especially in 70s and also later phases in this this uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, news newspaper is saying that okay russians uh, they will want to be part of Sokli's uh, beneficiation and and mining and then someone has made a decision that uh, it this was yeah, maybe 88. So that uh, okay, Russians are not 
part of this Sokli, Sokli work and, and uh, then someone is asking why Russians has been now abandoned from Sokli, they need to be part of that and they, they have offered that and that and so, so on. So that's just uh, saying that it's important also uh, also in from in in, in Russia, Russian this is Sokli at least that has been. Then what comes to this uh, environmental issues? It has been said uh, this news is also from eighty eight uh, that uh, it Sokli could be a, a model case for this this environmental uh, this uh, environmental uh, follow well follow up of environmental issues and how, how environmental issues has been solved and etc et Sokli could be a, a case study for for those issues and then it is saying also that it needs to be studied more the Sokli's environment, environmental issues and aspects, so that uh, we know what, what are the effects of the mining of, uh, in Sokli for the environmental uh, environment and, and so on. And that's, that hasn't been changed any, anyhow, if we look this, this, this uh, from 88, uh, well, this is just uh, the one newspaper from Mars this year that it's, it is saying that if we open open Sokli, it would be increased self efficiency of raw materials. Uh, some positive positive attitude new news from from there, and then after that uh, we got the Supreme Administrative Court decision uh, for for regarding those water and environmental permits, uh, so that they were they, those were returned to the to the permit authorities uh, and a lot of new uh, studies was said that is it is need to be done before permits can be granted so so uh, permitting is is uh, uh, one one thing what we need to look very closely uh, it has been done in early history also that the perm it un understood that environmental issues are important in Sokli area but uh, as we know now nowadays those are even more important and uh, and we need to pay a lot of attention to, to those 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 environmental issues and a lot of studies regarding uh, that aspect need to be done before uh, permit Permitting is possible. And then at the, at the end also, I want to raise this issue that uh, we don't want to be allow, alone here, so that this is challenge to all mining experts. This, this Sokli has been challenge for several experts and uh, from uh, many disciplines during these 55 years and still it is a challenge and I, I want to share, share this challenge to you also so that uh, what are the future extraction possibilities uh, for Sokli so, so, so that uh, we definitely welcome all fresh new ideas and, and techniques or ideas, ideas uh, which could be a part of, of this um, Sokli uh, multi-metal deposit beneficiation. If, in early history, we have had such a such a uh, beneficiation process and, and understanding the, how how to beneficiate ores and uh, what what it is today and what it will be in in future near future. Uh, so so, I believe that uh, there are a lot of future possibilities to to get. Uh, beneficial and, and, uh, and responsible mining in, in Sokli. That, but that needs a lot of expertise and, and I hope that uh, you can also share some of your expertise to, to this Sokli project. 
Uh, and I still have a shortly time, so <clears throat> uh, I want to show short video uh, from past past of work what has been done in Sokli. It has been filmed late 70s, 70s, and uh, let's. This is time when Sokli was explored. Soklin tutkimukset ovat olleet todellinen malminetsinnän suuruudekka. 13 vuoden aikana niihin osallistuvat kymmenet, jopa sadat henkilöt. Heidän työnsä tuloksena on sopilta löytynyt oloissamme merkittävä fosforimalmi esiintymä kaivosteollisuuden tulevaan käyttöön. And, and he said that Sokli has been found and Sokli is in the That's my question. Is it now the future? Say, are we now in that future? Hopefully. So, here was all what I have have to say. And please, if you have some something to ask. Excellent. Thank you, Pasi. Uh, um, we have uh, one person eagerly. Uh, holding their hand up for you. So uh, please, Markus. Where you are, Pasi, now. Rare, rare. Okay, I'm Markus from uh, Department of Mineral Resources. Hi, uh, from Ministry. A very interesting presentation. First, at first, uh, two compliments for us and for you. Our phosphorite looks, uh, looks better, but uh, your phosphorite <laughs> is much, much richer. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> a second second point, my 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 I don't know if this is question or uh, you have quite a thick thick supra. You everything you have there, rays and and uh, and uh, metals and um, uh, I prepared this question during your presentation. I wanted to ask uh, one way, but now I'm I have to ask the other way because your last last slide before this. Uh, movie clip you need the ideas how to how to extract things from from the ore i i, I thought actually ask from you do you have any ideas how, how to get the rays out, out from <laughs> out from the uh, ore you have yeah. ideas or not yeah. yeah yeah we have we have some 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 ideas but uh, this test work which i was saying earlier we have so limited amount of test work that uh, it's very hard to say at the moment is it easy or not or at all possible to, to extract research from this ore uh, or these, these ore types what we have there. So that, that, that work has been started now and we are getting a new, uh, new information regarding this, this, um, uh, this beneficiation point of view. But uh, definitely, I believe that we will not solve this issue uh, with a couple of tests. Uh, <laughs> this needs a comprehensive um, work and maybe it takes a couple of, couple of years easily to create a proper way to beneficiate a whole potential if we look the whole potential of Sokli and, and those commodities there. So mm -hmm. definitely new ideas are uh, well, more than welcome. Uh, good to know. Uh, uh, are you staying online now? I mean, uh, uh, it's, it's nice if you can hear uh, our next presentation. Our, our guys will talk about our phosphorite. And, yeah, uh, I can and go for the one line. Yes, I, I can. Uh, I don't have more questions, but if somebody has. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, with that, we need to go on to the next.